It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and other comics from all over. We ended up in Japan because we wanted to teach the laws of physics over and over. First, I get off the elevator, then you can get on. Understand? The Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. Welcome back to Talk Funny. I'm Mark Bailey. We're here this week with Tim Linnae. Welcome back, Tim. Hey, ho. I wanted to mention... Not that I have electronic drums in this office because that would take money, but if I did, the quote on the box that advertises it would say, let me read this, it would say, perfect drum set for aspiring young drummers. Now, I think I qualify. No, you don't. Because I'm aspiring to be young. (laughs) You killed it the other night. I am a drummer, did I? Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Thank you. I was. I tried to tape it. I tried to tape it. I was. I was pretty proud of it. I kind of lost it a little bit in the middle, but uh-huh. I was pretty proud of the beginning. That's the hardest part. Yeah, it's very hard. And uh, I. I thought I taped it, but I thought I had recorded you, it. You're a man of many talents. I was but shocked I, seeing that big, huge body behind that very small kit. It's like, it's like this huge monster cockroach banging away on the drums. <laughs> like a cockroach <laughs> doing a snare. <laughs> So, hey man, they can play the drums, man. I can't believe it. How can he hit them all so fast? Because he's eight times the size of the drums. <laughs> <laughs> get a, get three Tupperware yeah. containers, turn them upside down, right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> that'll be like the size of your hands, you know, making a making a circle. <laughs> and see how fast you can hit them, you know? So, yeah, because he's from the future. Uh, I was impressed with Stevie P. He was oh, yeah. singing. He can really well. Yeah, That's, he can really sing well. Yeah, he's he's quite the musician. I mean, he plays a lot of stuff. He was he was a violinist when he was young, and um, he's also. He, like choir boy and then he went into the hard rock phase so he became a really good guitar player but now he's actually putting on musicals and he's like well, he's, all the, why he was there playing drums his, right 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 his next big musical uh, through his company should I mention it yeah it's fine KTB Studios is going to be doing we're a, not sure when it's playing but yeah sometime next year I don't know I'm, I'm not in it so I don't care anyway uh, <laughs> well, love, well, love you Stevie anyway well, tell us uh, what you really feel <laughs> nope yeah, no, really. no sour grapes. No, really. Kind of like, like sour I'm raisins. Bitter. I'm not sour bitter at raisins. all. It's, it's more like sour raisins. Yeah, it's, no, it's more like it's sour wrinkled. wine. It's been it's brewing for prune, a long time. Prune, it's prune juice, very man. bitter. It's very bitter. Very bitter. Um, and uh, he's, it's a whole, like, something about a bunch of women in a Daiko drum corps or something like that. Or, what? And, and, uh, yeah, it's What's women, the name of the drum corps? Daiko? I, I have no yeah. idea, man. Indigo Girls playing? Or? I have no idea. But, you know, <laughs> what, 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 did, kind of, what did sort of freak me out is I would change that part, Mr. Daiko. D. Brown showed up. And, of course, we did Lowrider. Um, uh, he was uh, there at uh, Jesus Live's last stand, the last uh, open mic. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see him. Uh, you didn't see him? Maybe. Did I meet him? Yeah, maybe. Did, did you know. see me meet him? I Not that... I don't remember. Uh, my, my I, I met Andre. Andre, and yeah, all, keyboardist. All, all black people look the same to me. Really? So I met Did four. They? No, actually, apparently, no. <laughs> apparently, my wife's friend saw me riding past the Hilton early this morning, and I said, "All white fat guys look alike." Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, ride bears riding bikes. You know, that's what it is. But tell her I was in a hurry. That's why. <laughs> So he was the his uh, his father was the drummer for war. Yeah, his father's drummer for war, and then he's over here married with kids and a Japanese wife. And all he lives in the Goya. Yeah, he's he he lives in the Goya somewhere around here. Yeah, does he do paid um, stuff or? Yeah, he I mean, he teaches drums and does the English stuff, and you know he has like a half a dozen companies like you or something yeah. like that. But I mean, I don't think he makes any money at them. Why, yeah, why would you? Why would you make money at? A, I mean, a I have a bunch of companies myself. I don't make any money at them. So. I just no I, no, I don't make that much either. And I just it's just a good excuse to get away from the wife. That's <laughs> all I found. It's, it's a good tax write off. And the, the taxes are great. Yeah, I'm, and you can take a nap at two p.m. in your office if you want to. You get to work. Why not? Man. Yes. <laughs> and you can buy uh, electronic drums that your wife will never find out about because I don't have them. Yeah, you better cut this out again because you know <laughs> they're finding out about your uh, uh, midlife crisis going on. Yeah, watching that train wreck happen is so entertaining. The night you were there is like literally one of the, you know that had been an open uh, a jam night for almost like four years yeah and it had become really popular so all the all the all the ringers are in that night and the first band that gets up plays I think it's called Freeway it's a jazz kind of tune that all the jazz people do and um, they just sounded perfect it was horrible it's like okay show's over time to go home yeah they should be yeah. last they they should should be you don't you don't throw the best stuff right on the front end and then of course I gotta follow a band that sounds like this really popular sort of uh, gaijin band uh, what is it um, dude should I mean yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 cheap wine squad Okay, and you know, with uh, Fabio and uh, Kurt McGurk, who just had a congratulations, Kurt, on your new baby. Uh, I just want to say that. Anyway, they played a great uptown funk, and I come up and get play. Oh yeah, yeah. Then I come up and have to go to play Little Red Rooster with a guy doesn't who's the drummer who's going to play guitar and you know (laughs) does not even know the twelve bar blues. 
So we're just sounding horrible. It's like, oh god, this is sucks like a no problem. Yeah, jam nights. Something yeah. uh, the people that don't live in the Goya should know that as far as foreigners in the Goya, there are actually more foreign musicians in the Goya than there are foreigners in the Goya. I think so. I mean, yes, ev- absolutely. Everybody's in three bands. <laughs> Don't worry, you gotta have five projects, man. And we're not even making money at comedy, and we're good at that, apparently. <laughs> but I mean, you're good at closing joints. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, and we're not even in the drug business, but we can close joints like that. I mean, you know? think about it. If you want to close your shop, no paper, no paper necessary. We're gonna come by. You be- maybe just pay us. You know, hey, pay us every week, or we're gonna come by and do a comedy show. <laughs> One of our audience members came up. He's a musician. You know who I'm talking about. He plays sax. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he suggested, he said, why don't you guys, you, you should probably talk to Bottom Line. I said, what makes you think I haven't talked to Bottom Line? I already did Bottom Line in the 90s. When, I didn't know that. Before they charged you to rent a room. Now they charge you to rent a room. And the Bottom Line manager, I worked with him at Radio I. He was a manager of other DJs. So I'm on good terms. But this guy said, no, you should, you should talk to him. I, I talked to him. He said, we want 30,000 yen. I said, no. Yeah, we already talked. Yeah. No, but you should talk to him. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you, I'm from the future. I already did this. But you should talk to him. So what you're saying is I should say, yes, you got 30,000 yen from me? I said, that's not what we do. We don't pay to play. We never have. We never That's will. true. That's true. We never have. And there's another venue in Fushimi who said, well, everybody does. And I said, well, we don't. And we didn't. We didn't have a great show. I was almost strangled to death by my own belt, <laughs> by, a, by a former comic. <laughs> and we had a Manzai show where my partner, who's a friend of mine, just left in the middle of my set. Just left. He was you on stage. Horse head or something like that? Yeah, some kind of predator. I said, yeah, yeah pred- <laughs> predator mask. mask. Yeah. He said, uh, you don't know Predator? I'm like, is that a movie? He said, you don't know? I said, I'm not a 12-year-old boy. No, I don't. You're not Epstein? No. This guy's rich, by the way. This guy's rich. <laughs> Does he have his own two islands? This guy, no, not not that rich, but this guy actually is rich and he's never worked in his life. I've talked about this with Chris. He will say stuff. I went to collect money one time from Shin Sakai. Once upon a time, they paid. And I'm walking back up and I'm walking up that road past the McDonald's where the Uptown Diner used to be in Sakai. And I see my rich friend who was on stage there. He's waiting in his car for his daughter, music lessons. He gets out and says, I thought your office was in Yamacho. Yeah, it is. But what are you doing here? And I said, today I've been in Seto. Kifu, Shin Sakai, Fujigaoka, Mie, Mie Yokaichi. Yokaichi, in one day. He said, but your office is there. Yeah, what do you think? I just sit at the office and wait for money to rain down? It doesn't <laughs> happen that way. If I just sit in my office, I'll be watching... Um, just if you put a few videos. small ads in a few newspapers... If you if you build it, if you, they will come. <laughs> no, they won't. No, they just won't. Just follow our program. If you build you it, they will come. No, but I will because I'll be now. watching porn all day. I will come. I will come. <laughs> But they won't come. The customers won't come. Hello, Patreon. Uh, wait, hello, wait, wait, wait. What, what's the first thing you do after having sex? What? <laughs> Clear your browser history. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He has no idea how that people work for a living. And uh-huh. he'll say, hey, do you want to? He said, I'm going to go to Hawaii to buy a truck tomorrow. You want to come? No, I can't. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why don't you want to come? I want to. I want to. He said, I'll pay for it. I, I want to, but it's even too late to cancel now for my class. And I'll cancel for, you know. A week. He said, well, why can't you just walk away? And I said, do you know what a job is? He said, I've never worked. No, uh, no kidding. No kidding. He said, well, and he has, you know. His Work's opinion. overrated. It is overrated. I don't know why I keep doing it, you know. I'm thinking I'm 55. I was actually thinking, you know, I was talking about this. I have to work so much. And I'm almost out on the streets right now. I'm just, just going to get my shopping cart. Oh. Start wandering the one more, one more comedy show is going to put you over yeah. the edge. <laughs> we can put another place out of business. You just need that one more. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't play there anymore. I like them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you love me? Yeah. Don't ever play doing, my venue. Yeah, stop. We're going to stop playing here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what could go wrong? We got another place that we're, a new place that we're playing at, and a guy got stabbed not far from there. Oh, yeah. And he di- he died. Let's hope we don't on stage <laughs> that night. And uh, what could go wrong? That was quite a vicious video, though. That was, yeah. It was an amazing video. Well, I think the per- people that were, like, video, you know, pulling out their iPhones are all his Yakuza buddies. Yeah, they were. Yeah, so they were. Go. And then you have this bad, uh, this Filipino speaking bad Japanese. Naifu dayo. Naifu dayo. Oh, abune. 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 That's, oh, yeah. sorry, that's Yakuza's uh, accent. <laughs> abune. <laughs> abune. Yeah, law-abiding Japanese say abunai. <laughs> but you say abune. <laughs> and everybody that's... Watch out. I mean, I, and you know the street that that happened. You know that the Koban is two streets over. If you crawled, you could get there in three minutes. Man. Crawled from there, and the cops are like, "Oh, oh knife! Oh, I'm, no, thank you. I mean, there's a knife." 
I'm not, what are we like in the crime prevention? <laughs> well, you're wearing a suit. It's kind of it's kind of misleading. Yeah. <laughs> you got a badge and a gun. That's kind of misleading. We were kind of hoping you would protect us from these people. And then uh, the guy walks towards the guy filming, and then that's the end of the film. Yeah, that's it. Yep. So as soon as that happened, I think I said on the chat, any other comics got a problem with the way I'm running this thing? <laughs> it's at the video. Because <laughs> I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> any more complaints? Yeah, any more co- yeah, yeah. Speak up. Speak up. That guy, my wife, oh, here's here's something funny. My wife, wife, knew, all the time, my wife knew that guy. She knew the guy he killed, but she said the guy that got, that got killed used to be uh, in Minato-ku, near our house. Oh, okay. He was, and my son used to date a Yakuza, lived a, across the street from a green and orange house. Hello, police! <laughs> my son used to date his daughter, that guy's daughter. And he came, the guy came over to my house one time with a box. This is like something like Goodfellas. <laughs> and he said, uh, you mind if I uh, leave something here? Uh, yeah, I kind of mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, he goes, just for the weekend. I said, no, no, no. I said, I'll, I'll pay you if I don't have to keep it here. I'll, I will, you know, I'll do some, let me, I'll whack a guy if I don't have to keep it here. I, I don't want to, <laughs> because of my business. And I said, no, I said, don't look now, but there's cameras on the street. They have cameras pointing down. The guys had installed it when I asked them. My wife said, there's no cameras, because my wife's always on my side. She goes, that's not a camera. <laughs> I took a picture. I sent it to an engineer, a friend of mine. He said, yeah, that's a camera. I asked the guys installing it, who made these cameras? And they're, they're called NTS cameras, okay, yeah. and they're for traffic. But they're that's on. Cameras. They're filming the sidewalk. Uh-huh. So if someone comes to my house with a box and then leaves without a box... You know, it's kind of obvious. You left the box in my house. And the police show up and they find something. Yeah, and they say, "Ya party, guy, Jean." Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 can we? Uh, what, by the way, your bicycle. We want to know that it's your bicycle. One time, I had a lady a policeman knocking on. She knocked on two doors. There's two foreigners that live on my street. <laughs> me and another. And she's knocking on. I was watching. I saw her walking up. She didn't knock on everybody else's door. Nope, just yours. And she's coming to mine. So I locked it. And she knocked on the door. And she goes, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, Japanese, but uh, excuse me, I'm in my house. I own this house. I'm living here. What, what do you want? She said, what are you doing here? I said, I live here. She said, can I see some ID? I said, uh, no. Click. <laughs> wrong, wrong answer. Close the door and a policeman. <laughs> pum, pum, pum. Now there's two of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't see her ID. And I said, I live here. And I said, okay, none of your business. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there should be an app where you could just on your phone and you could delete your browser history on your computer from your phone. That's what we really yeah, need. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because they're like, we'd like to take a look at your computer. No! Emergency, emergency dump switch. Yeah. But you can't do it while they're watching yet. So you need one on your iPhone. Yeah, I've, I've just go iPhone. delete everything. So, sort of like flash paper of the seven. But there's, but there's tests for your. Just delete it. <laughs> I'll fake that. You know, I can't fake, fake not watching porn. You can't fake not watching porn. You can't get rid of the mind gonna, porny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's not porn. That's <laughs> That's cartoons. And she said, So what kind of job? And I said, I really don't have time to talk. Is there a problem? She said, We're just visiting each house and making sure each person lives there who's supposed to. Was this in April or June? April. There you go, yeah? Yeah. They, they, come, they, they came by once like that, and they're like, dung, 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 dung. Yeah. Uh, we we want to talk to you. I was like, well, what do you want to talk? Just talking through the door. I'm not even opening the door. And she's like, well, we want to check population. I'm like, don't need it. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Just not, not to buy. And I'm not, I don't want, I'm not buying, you know. It was in the spring, and they had, it wasn't p- police, but it was the census. Mm-hmm. And the census lady would come by, and she, she'd say, uh, and so I had a, a four-year-old son at the time, and he likes to crawl around on the first floor in my office. He likes to do that. I don't know why. And he's just crawling around. Is that around. a leash? <laughs> no, but a leash is underrated. Yeah. A leash is important. When you, you know, people, oh, how cruel would it, how cruel are you to have a four-year-old? We had our four-year-old son on a leash in the airport. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you yeah. ever tried looking for a four-year-old in an airport? When yeah, yeah, You exactly. turn your back for 20 They're seconds. Gone. He's gone. You can't see him. You call him. He doesn't know his name yet. You call him. Uh, he got lost at the airport and took us 20 minutes to find him. This is also, oh, actually, Shinkansen Station. Oh, yeah. That's right. lovely. On the platform, okay? He could get on any train, going <sighs> anywhere. Finally, we found him, you know? And so one of my SJW female friends, she said, oh, it's so cruel. I said, yeah, you know what's really cruel is abandoning your child. That's what I would be charged with if they if the police found him. Catch him before the police catch him. Because then they're going to think, you know, does your dad... Uh, no, he... My dad says the F word all the time. Yeah. <laughs> He, said, he always says he wants to kill mom. And he said he wished we were never born. Okay. <laughs> Snuck on his door. 
But, <laughs> but back to the he was crawling around in the dark on the so first.